That's very interesting. And, and I'll actually take a, 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 a line from your issue here about the, the lack of success in terms of distributing food globally. Uh, so what is your motivation? Because I'm, I'm kind of sensing a bit of a humanitarian in you there, maybe. So is your motivation humanitarian? Is it ethical? Is it moral? Is it religious by any chance? Is it just a sort of a scientific curiosity of pushing the envelope and, you know, or enjoying the journey, taking one step at a time? My motivation is, is deeply innate, and it's, it's based on um, a deep sadness for um, a life force that is riddled with so many problems. I look at life as being just this beautiful gift of being in existence in the moment, um, not uh, from a Zen perspective, but also the, the laughter of life and to, to spread connections and, and curiosity and humor um, and intelligence. And I look around it at the anger and dystopia and aggression of humans and uh, the, the uh, people who are... Um, you know, have uh, uh, horrible disabling diseases. Um, and so it, I have a deep sadness about that, and I, I don't think that that's the way it ought to be. <laughs> I think it's as, as common sense as that. Sorry, I have an itch on my nose. Um, but when I see this all around me, and I know it could be better, then it's an innate desire to want to be part of whatever school of thought or ever activists or action plan that can try to make it better. And I mean this strictly in the areas of disease and debilitation, mm -hmm. uh, the aging process of Alzheimer's and senility and brittle bones and um, osteoporosis and crippling diseases to, you know, children and uh, younger adults. Again. Oh, there we go. Uh, younger adults who have... Um, just horrible diseases and anguish and pain and sadness. Um, I just don't think life has to be like that. I think life can be better. I look at my rose garden, my bamboo garden, and my trees, and I nurture them. And sure, they get insects and whatnot that feed off of them and, and destroy the flowers and the buds. But it's a constant process of balance and, and trying to stop the, uh, the um, entropy and try to prolong life. Um, so, so. I suppose it's humanitarian in a way, but um, I'm not a hum big humanitarian. In uh, I'm a trans-humanitarian, I suppose. Yeah, that's, uh, that's I think, something that uh, Kevin Warwick would probably say. Uh, but I, I do feel that compassion, at the very, like at very, very clear compassion, it seems to me. So I want to also ask you... Uh, do you have any religious uh, affiliations, past or present? And how yes. do they impact on your work, on your ethics? Yes, I do. I was um, baptized and confirmed uh, Episcopalian. I went to church just about every Sunday with my family, my parents and my siblings, up until I was about 18. And one day I took a look around me and I thought, I am tired of men telling me what to do. It was always a man preaching at the front of the church, and it it offended me. And so I left. I became a, a universalist, a Unitarian universalist, and I because it was more humanitarian. Um, and I practiced that for a number of years, and then I um, lived with the Navajo Indians and explored their religion and mysticism and lore. Um, study different religious beliefs around the world um, to develop my own synthesis and synergy of, of what, why we need beliefs, what they do for us, what we can do for them, how they evolve, and, and are they really necessary. A Zen seems to be the strongest belief I hold, not as a Buddhist, but Zen as far as you know, Zen of life, being in the moment and just the, the uh, focus of life, you know, the, it's not a piercing focus, but a, you know, a, a clean perspective of uh, cognizance of being there, you know, when you're alert and aware, but also relaxed. So it's 
peace of mind is, is crucial to me. Today I hold no religious belief. I think religion is, uh, not a healthy thing for, for, uh, a society because it has dictums and rules and regulations and it's, I'm right, you're wrong. And I think that whole sensibility of one group of people being right, and another one being wrong. When you have so many diverse views, some, something's, something's not working here. So um, I find that very difficult to deal with. Um, I do get a little bit offended when people profess their religious beliefs to me based on the Bible and take it literally. Um, and I have some people I care about uh, deeply who do this and, and base... They'll say such and such. Well, it says in the Bible, and God, and He says this, and we, you know, and I, I that I mean, also I step back because who wrote the Bible? Oh, how many people wrote it? Um, and I think it's a um, Christianity, of course, like many religions, is is healthy for so many people, and it does have have great value to it for so many people, but not for me. Um. So I think the strongest belief I hold now is uh, kindness and love <laughs> and, and cognitive plasticity, <laughs> keeping the mind active. <laughs> that's, that's great because, I mean, to a large degree, this is very, very similar to how I feel. I mean, I, I consider myself atheist on most days and on a... If I'm incredibly flexible on that specific day, I may say I'm an agnostic, but... That's really pushing it. And, but Zen, on the other hand, is the only religion, quote, unquote, that you can be an atheist in. And you can have the sort of mind of no mind and embrace it and just go along with the laughter and without embracing any specific deity. And I, I find that that works for me. So I, and, and it's also a lot of fun. There's no dogmas. It's, it's very liberating, I find. Mm-hmm. So, so, I totally uh, associate with with what you just said. But let's go back to your work now, um, because that's more interesting. I think. Uh, how? What are your goals? What are your goals that you would like to accomplish with your work now? You have so many uh, fields that you're involved in. Do do they come all together in your sort of uh, primo human uh, project? Is that the combination of your work or primo post human project or, or is it, do you have another goal after it? How do you see the well, evolution of your work? I was just looking at something I wrote and let me read it and, and maybe this sure. will help me focus. Sure. Um, since the 1980s I have focused on, sorry, did I move that? Okay. Focused on, since the 1980s, I have focused on human technology integration and the relationship between arts, design, and science. My theoretical activity is concerned with human enhancement and the methods for extending and expanding human capabilities through the media of nano, bio, info, cogno, techno sciences and within the artistic practice of visual, narrative, and biological arts toward the emergence of new and big plus media. So I think that kind of says it all right there. Um, my immediate work is to finish my dissertation. Um, I am also writing a book uh, with Max Moore on uh, transhumanism. It's an anthology, and uh, getting that done and out the door to publishers is a top priority. I would like to write more books and visuals. Um, I'd like to... Uh, even uh, take a look at my work over the years and put it together in a collection uh, that has a narrative with it that um, explores human enhancement and radical life extension and and the whole um, computer human integration. Um, I don't think there's another area, another field that I'd like to get into other than probably brain science and I think maybe it would be great fun to do a postdoctorate in um, neuroscience or cognitive science um, from the perspective of, of design and human enhancement. I love teaching. 
I would love to spend more time uh, lecturing and teaching and actually chair a department on human enhancement and bring together the brilliant minds. I'm not a brilliant mind, but I would, I, I like to uh, catapult uh, brilliant minds together to problem solve. So I think that would be a great project. You know, thank you for inspiring me here. Um, I think that, yeah, I'd like to be, um, paid to, uh, just problem solve this whole human enhancement issue and the, and the major issues that will come about when, uh, say, people want to stay 100% biological or 100% human and what will be the, the schism there, you know, what type of gaps will we need to deal with and also human rights with morphological freedom, for example. Mm-hmm. So I'd, I'd like to, um, work on that. <laughs> 